Probably most of you already using Axios for your React application and dealing with the promises that Axios giving by default. But have you ever thought that Axios is really meant to be an extensive uh, library that you can use also for your React hooks as well without dealing with your uh, component re-rendering when promise is resolved. So for that specific cases, there's a library called Axios Hooks that I discovered lately and started to use on my applications and it just reduced the amount of code that I'm producing and it really helps to connect everything together especially if you are building an application with your react hooks it just really helps you to avoid unnecessary wrapper functions for your promises to resolve and then re-render your component so basic setup for this axios hook is actually you just have to have an axios uh, installed uh, via npm or yarn and also install an actual package uh, with Axios hooks. That's probably what you need. And then if you scroll down with their uh, GitHub repository, which I will put a link down below in the description uh, for this video, you will see they have a pretty much simple example how you can use uh, Axios hooks to get started with it and how to use it with your component. So imagine we have an application and uh, we just fetching this kind of random data. This is basically a random name generator or uh, something like that or user generator. So that kind of stuff just to test this out. To get started, I basically set it up a plain uh, create react app application, uh, which contains uh, basically with no other files than a default create react app, uh, which looks like something like this. And there is no changes there. So what we are going to do is yarn add axios and axios hooks. These both packages are basically required to have an Axios hooks uh, itself. And after installing this, we basically don't need anything else for now uh, for testing this uh, library itself. And let's just uh, try to import this as an application package. Uh, this package, by the way, contains also uh, all, all sorts of TypeScript definitions. So if you have an already uh, set up TypeScript version for your Create React app, it will work uh, without any issues. Uh, so it's really built uh, for any kind of React uh, hooks based use cases. And we are ma ma naming it use access during import because this is anyway going to look like as a plain react hook uh, component and we don't want to mess with function names because almost all hook kind of functions in react hooks uh, contain use prefix like use state use context uh, or use ref so that kind of stuff is pretty generic and uh, already standard for uh, react hook uh, based functionalities and what we are going to do is basically we have to add uh, an actual implementation for this, like use Axios. And you can see there is like already predefined type definitions, uh, which helps a lot if you are especially writing your code in VS Code. It just pops up and uh, gives you ability to configure your API pretty much uh, very easily and you basically have to define an axios configuration request configuration which is standard for all sorts of axios requests so you don't need any uh, specific things here and we right now defining a url this url gives us a random user and username definition so we don't want to uh, even implement uh, this json response we just I uh, want to test this uh, library out and see if loading passes 
what kind of data we receive at the end and we basically going to print out that data without making any kind of changes uh, and uh, we don't care uh, that much right now and you can define all sorts of uh, request parameters here so right now I'm just defining that this is going to be a get request and without any other uh, like headers or uh, body types or content types uh, nothing really special I don't need that right now and for this return type it actually actually returns two type of uh, variables uh, which uh, first of them is an actual object which which contains data loading error and actual response and another array uh, variable contains a function which you can use to refetch uh, if you for example have uh, let's say a load more button uh, that you want to refresh your request or load another page you just have to use this function to call this hook again this is very similar to uh, an actual Apollo GraphQL React setup uh, where you have a query and you have a refetch to fetch this query again. Uh, they probably done the same logical implementation for basic HTTP requests that you are doing uh, with Axios. So there is no that much of a difference there. If you used to write Apollo requests, it is just the same or vice versa if you learn how to work with use axios it probably will be the same uh, with apollo requests except it's a graphql so uh, let's talk about that in later videos by the way if you haven't yet clicked that like button please do so it just helps me a lot to uh, move forward with these videos okay so let's jump uh, with an actual loading state checking and if we have currently our component we can basically make a console log just to view what it looks like uh, if we try to uh, watch over uh, the data that is coming through uh, in our console log when we basically refresh our component and if I'll do a full refresh, uh, you will see that at first there is a, a data undefined, loading is true, uh, error is null, and response is undefined. This is like first time when component is rendering. Basically, Axios wasn't making any request at that time. It just tries to make uh, the component rendering and starts sending an HTTP request. Then when a response came, uh, you can see that loading is false and this is the data that we received uh, from that API endpoint which basically uh, a JSON format and we don't even need to uh, do something uh, with it and we can basically get uh, let's say data dot uh, add that company in order just to display that text uh, somewhere here so if we will try to uh, make let's say a variable that will contain an actual text uh, for our uh, like visual display we can do something like this we will remove this text and display uh, an actual like company name for this JSON response in order to just to see that this uh, actual, actual API request worked or not and for that we basically going to define a variable oh, it's not a const it's a let uh, because we will change that later on uh, let's define that like uh, text it's a dummy name but I mean it's fine uh, let's keep it empty uh, just in case if something uh, went wrong we will know that if there is no text then it's uh, probably something went went wrong uh, so if we are going to make a checking let's say if we have a loading state uh, during component re-rendering or initial render we will set uh, this as loading and then else if we have our data and 
we have our data dot add and we have our data dot add that company we will display this uh, as a result for the text uh, which means that we will have an actual responded uh, add company name displayed as we described uh, earlier so this means that we just have to put this text as a part of the rendering and for displaying this uh, later on as you can see like when you i'm refreshing that uh, the first time it displays loading because the request is just going through then when response came it just changes that to an actual add response uh, that we are getting from uh, our server so to make things way more uh, elegant and clear uh, we basically have to make uh, use state uh, for this text because uh, sometime uh, we will need to make an error message display because uh, it's probably going to have some failures and we have to describe that in our react component let's say let's set state use state uh, for react and keep this text uh, clean uh, at the beginning uh, there is no need for that and for that we will use use effect uh, because this hook is actually re-rendering component when uh, something is arrived then we will have to just keep uh, listening for the data parameter if data is changed then we have to change our text and also if an error is came then uh, we have to make changes uh, for the text as well so we are also going to keep track for the error itself and because uh, there is a loading state for that we also have to uh, keep our loading state uh, running but for that we will use just another uh, side of the text uh, naming hey this is the loading text and uh, in that way we don't need include loading in our use effect because it's just a uh, one time uh, thing and it will run uh, first time anyway uh, so we are just keeping this here a loading let's make it in this way so this means that let's put this inside the p because we don't want to show this p when we don't have a loading okay so now we have actually our loading state and when component is re-rendering this loading is true and it displays this loading text otherwise it just hides this loading text and we will see only this one so whenever we want to set our data we will check this condition if we have everything defined here or if we have an error then it is most probably that we have to set an actual error message uh, which means that uh we just have to keep things uh clean in, based on axios error message itself and uh, don't worry about uh, other stuff and because right now we have text as a state parameter we just have to make set text instead of just assigning it and it will re-render component and it will display an actual text anyway uh, without having a, a straight assignment because this could change any time uh, that's why hooks and actu actually gets a lot more beneficial for us and if we will refresh you can see a loading then it turns to this uh, state as well and if we try we will try let's say uh, write up a junk uh, domain name uh, just to give 
an Axios a wrong URL to make a request. This is probably going to fail uh, with unresolved error, something like that. You can see that like it is network error uh, and we get an actual network error message uh, displayed here. So hopefully uh, you will get a lot of information from this, at least I tried. Uh, if you have any question, just let me know with a comment down below or write me directly uh, over Twitter. Uh, if you haven't yet uh, checked my website, please check it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. That's the most important thing. That uh, subscribe helps me a lot to keep this channel going forward. So stay tuned and uh, see you next time.